What do the Great Commission churches believe? This is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new here to the channel, go ahead and subscribe as we release content related to the cults and sharing the gospel with them several times a week. And all the content we're going to be talking about today comes from my recently released book, Sharing Jesus with the Cults. It's available on Amazon as paperback or Kindle. And so let's go ahead and jump into our content for today. And that is the Great Commission Churches. Who are they? What are they? What do they believe? And so uh, this is a group that I would have to say I included them in my book as a cult, not because of their doctrine. And I have to keep on emphasizing that. That what makes a group a cult, at least in my opinion, is not their doctrine, but it is their practice. Specifically, the evidence and practice of mind control. And that is very much out there in spades, and uh, they very much deny it, but a lot of former members of this group have spoken out, including a former student of mine at Bethel Seminary in the class that I was teaching Understanding the Colts. Um, and so I, I needed to emphasize that right off the bat that this group is really just, it, it, my concern is their practice of mind control and abusive behavior, which has been with them from their beginnings. And even in spite of the fact they're doing a lot of work to sweep a lot of stuff under the rug, and they have like a public relations committee. You know, since my book comes out, came out, I've already been contacted by this group and one of the key figures within this group. And man, was this guy manipulative. Oh my gosh. And I, it just made me all the more confident in what I was saying and bringing them to light uh, for you all. And so uh, their origins come with a guy named Jim McCotter. And uh, back in the 60s, 70s, I believe, uh, he had a, what is referred to now within the group as the heavenly vision, in which he very clearly saw and felt compelled and called that he would become the leader that would help the gospel get to all the world in one generation. And he believed that uh, that's, that was what Jesus originally wanted, and yet somehow, it, and it is kind of a weird question, you know, why haven't we gotten to the entire world and made disciples of all nations? I mean, for heaven's sakes, it's 2018. But there you have it. So he believed that if every believer lived like the Apostle Paul, that we could see the gospel reach every people group and make disciples of all nations in one generation. And, you know, I, have to, I would have to say that's not too far off the mark. If that were the case, I, I could see that very much happening, just exponentially the same. But this group was compared in their lifestyle from the beginning to the shepherding movement or like the multiplication movement, just very much like the International Church of the Christ that we looked at. And uh, when that kind of thing comes in, or like say the covering theology of the New Apostolic Reformation that we talked about, when that kind of stuff comes into play, it almost is always followed by abuse and mind control culture that gets implemented into the group. And so they had self-admitted abuses. They came out with the Strength and Weaknesses paper because they were getting listed all over the place in lots of different books and articles uh, in the day uh, and websites as a dangerous group, an abusive group. Uh, they were included in the original copy of you know Churches That Abuse by Ron Enroth, uh, the first accredited and you know, recognized a cold recovery center, Wellspring Retreat. You can still go on their website today. It's founded by a former member of this group. So we are talking about a very abusive group. And so you have you know behavior control, thought control, information control, emotional control, the classic bite model that has been practiced. Um, they're very prevalent. Uh, they 
at least in their beginnings, they were very prevalent on college campuses. And that was kind of a strategic thing, reach the young people, reach the key centers of influence, sending them out to all over the world um, and, and to be able to reach the gospel. And so they very quickly spread, you know, from national to international, and then they had a whole lot of complications. And so now it's, um, it's toned down a bit, but uh, like I said, the, the practices are still being uh, practiced. And so I go into great detail with a lot of quotes from real people who are part of this group in the book on all of those different things, uh, behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. So I want to know what you have to say. Um, and so did, is there something about this group that I did not cover that you would like to share with the group? Are there questions you have about this group? Do you have personal experience or know somebody who is in this group? Or maybe are you in this group? In any case, I would like to hear your comments down below. And I'll be checking back to see what you have to say. Some of those comments uh, and, and questions I'll be using for my weekly Q&A at the end of the week on uh, the Colts. And so uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like the content for the day. And share this video with others who are trying to reach people caught in religion with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.